لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي كان موجودا قبل هدوث الأشياء ويبقى بعد فناء الأشياء تفرد بالأولية والقدم ووسم كل شيء ما عداه بالفناء والعدم كما قال عز شانه كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه وكل نفس ذائقة الموت وقال كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام سبحان من لا يخفى عليه اختلاف النيات ولا يعزب عنه معاصي العباد في الخلوات سبحان الله الذي منه خليقة العباد وإليه المعاد فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يرى ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يرى نشهد أن لا إله إلا هو الملك الذي لا ينازع في ملكه ولا يضاد في حكمه يعذب من يشاء بما يشاء كيف يشاء ويرحم من يشاء بما يشاء كيف يشاء تعذيبه المسيئين عدل وعفو تفضل الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون والحمد لله على رسول المسدد المحمود الأحمد بالقاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المأسومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه تبارك وتعالى في كتاب المجيد والفرقان الحميد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا نحن نحي الموت ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحسيناه في إمام مبين آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته When a person does good deeds he leaves behind his mark Whenever we walk on the roads, on the ground, and when the roads are either snowy or muddy, and if you look back, if you have crossed, you will see you have left some marks behind, right? You see your footprints. And uh, it's quite interesting that, you know, those that track animals in the forests, they go by these very tracks. They look at the footprints and they say, yeah, here a tiger passed, here a lion passed, here an elephant passed, or here a bear passed. They can read those things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Yaseen that we all read regularly, ayat number 12 says, Inna nahnu nuhyil mawta wa naqtubu ma qaddamu wa atharahum. Verily we give life to the dead and we write down what they have sent before them and even their footprints which they leave behind. وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ أَحْسَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ And we have encompassed everything in a manifest guide. So when we come into this world, and we live through 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years, whatever time Allah has chosen for us, and we leave, we have left footprints behind. There is an interesting story. There was, there was one a rich man, and I use this word rich very carefully because who is rich? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ana al-ghani wa antum al right? Rich we tend to think as money no rich is a ghani a rich or a ghani a ghani is one who is needless who does not need anything right? we need air we need water we need sleep we need food we need light, we need, you know, all these things we, that we need. So are we rich? We are faqir, right? We are faqir, we are poor, we need everything. Just because I have accumulated some wealth, then yes, I may be uh, uh, less desirous of that one. But as we all know, the more you have, the more you want. Yeah? The more you have, it's never enough. 
it is never, never enough. But anyway, that's a side story. So the word, when we use the word rich, remember only Allah is rich. Only Allah is ghani. We are all faqir. We are all faqir, right? We are all fuqara, so to speak. So he had a, he, this man did not like to give his money easily. He had a good son who always used to tell him that he should share what Allah has blessed him with the less fortunate. The old man said, I will give it all away after I've died, after I'm dead. So the son reminds him and says, Baba, that's all good. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. That to give one date to a needy in your lifetime is the same as giving one sack of dates after your death. There is far more value, there is far more value in giving during your lifetime than after you. And you all know that, uh, that famous story of uh, this man who had a, f a warehouse of dates. And when he passed away, his son called and says, my father left this was here, that Ya Rasulullah, you distribute all this. So the Prophet distributed this all to the fuqara of Medina. And then towards the end, there was one date that was half rotten left. He says, I wish he had given uh, this half rotten date during his lifetime, it would have had more reward than this whole warehouse that he has distributed after his death, right? So very, very important that we do that, uh, uh, that we have uh, whilst we still have. So one day, then uh, all men wanted to go out. So he tells his son, it's dark, so carry a lamp with me and stay ahead so I can see the path. The son obeyed halfway halfway through the wherever the, their journey wherever they were going he steps back and falls behind he were in initially he was leading now he steps back and the father after a while says son didn't i tell you to follow i can't see i can't see if you are not in front of me because i can't see the path it's all very dark the son turns around and says father this is exactly what i've been trying to tell you that if you want light in your grave, you have to give away what you have in the way of Allah before you die, not after you die. The, finally, the old man understood and then he, he, he got on the right side. So the question here is that when we are in this world and we leave these tracks behind, what sort of tracks do we leave behind? I know it is very hard for the young ones to to kind of figure out and say, you know, what is he talking about, right? They're still very young. To them, you know, the life is a long way. But for people like me and some of us up here, when we know time is coming very fast, right, before we go, one day you wake up and you look in your WhatsApp and it says, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajihun, we have received the news of the passing away of so and so, right? And that's when you know it's my time is up, I'm gone. So what tracks do I leave behind? How will I be remembered after I am gone? Yeah, apart from my friends, my family, you know, my community and so on, they will remember for a few days and so on. But will I, did, what sort of impact did I have on the rest of the community? These are things that we really need to think about and if we don't think about this one, then time will go by and we will be left. So, you know, when the news comes, as I've shared this many times before, when the news comes that Haider Jafar has passed away, your first reaction is inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun, because that is customary. This is what we all do. I'm not worried about that. What is the immediate thought that pops in your head? Immediate thought, which you will not share with anybody. Good riddance to bed rubbish. Yeah? Finally gone. Yeah? All, this, all the life that he was with us gave us nothing but trouble. Right? Ya Allah, why did you have to keep him so long? Couldn't you have taken him a little bit earlier and saved us all this hassle that he, we went through? Or will the thought pop in your mind? And this, by the way, if these thoughts pop in your mind, and then you will come and pray namaz uh, janaza uh, there, and you will say, Allahumma inna la na'alamu minhu illa khaira. Yeah? Oh Allah, I know nothing about this person except good. There is a philosophy to that, by the way. There is a philosophy to that, that despite what I have done to you, you choose on that particular moment to find 
the sense of forgiveness in the, from the bottom of your heart. And if it is sincere, Allah says, I am the greatest of forgivers. Right? You choose that, yes, despite what he has done to me, I'm willing to forgive. So will this thought cross your mind or will a thought cross your mind that here goes a good person? You know, we, he left his mark on this world. He affected me this way, that way, or whatever way. Right? So these are things that we have to think about. And when we want to do good, remember that, Allah, that shaitan will not leave us alone. Huh? Shaitan will not go after the one who is already on the wrong path. He has already got him. Why waste energy and resources there? Yeah? Shaitan will come to the masjid. He will not go to the bar. He's got them there. He'll come to the masjid. He will come to the Imam Barga. And he will come to those places where good is happening. Or he will come when you are thinking of doing good, right? He will be there all the time to try and create that sense of doubt. What does Allah again in Surah Yasin say? Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adama an la ta'budu shaytan innahu lakum aduwwum mubin. Did I not enjoin upon you, did I ask you, oh, children of Adam, that you shall not worship the shaitan? What does this worship mean? Do we worship shaitan? Of course we don't. In this sense, the worship means we follow shaitan. We follow what he tells. He, for he it is to you an enemy, an avowed enemy. And he should worship me, for that is the straight path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us constantly, if only we read the Quran, not only for thawab, but to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a mind and a heart. The mind's job is to sift through information that is coming there and to reason out, but it is the heart that will accept. The mind will hear all this information, Everything is there. It will sort out what is good, what is bad. It understands what is good, what is bad. But then when it filters into the heart, and when the mind and the heart are in the same page, then there is movement. Otherwise, it is only the mind accepting. Right? We hear, today if you look around in the universities, North American universities, and you look at who is teaching Islamic courses. Is, uh, whether it is an introductory course or it is a high le higher level course or so, anything to do with Islam, if you look at the universities, you will find that about 60 to 70 percent of those that are teaching are non-Muslims, Jews, Christians, other, uh, other faiths. Muslims are very few, very few. So those that are teaching Islam are far more knowledgeable than you and I. That is why he's a PhD in, you know, he's a, he's a PhD and a double PhD and a double masters and so on and so forth. They are teaching Islam to Muslims and non-Muslims altogether. So the, the valid question that comes about is, why are they not Muslims? They know more than I, you and I. Because to them it is all in the mind. It has not filtered to the heart as yet, right? When it filters into the heart and the mind and the heart accept, that's when you know there is the truth and then you will act. Otherwise, it is all there. We have all heard hundreds of majalises over our lives. Why does sometimes, by the way, what I'm saying is nothing new. I'm just saying it in a different way. Hundreds before me have said the same thing and hundreds after me will say the same thing. Right? But why is it that sometimes when I say something, it affects you and you act into it? Right? This is a valid question. That you say, yesterday that Maulana said the same thing, nothing happened to me. Today this guy said the same thing and it affected me. It is because two reasons could possible, two reasons. One, the sincerity of the speaker and two, the sincerity of your heart. When those two sincerities come along, you accept it and you move forward. Right? And you come to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are today, for example, you are today is the day of Juma. Uh, you know, you had hundreds of things to do. You had work, you, you know, you took time off and all this. Your mind said that it, uh, there is no need to go. It's only a place. Uh, maybe I'll get some, uh, you know, uh, some knowledge. So, so, but I've got so many other things to do. No, not to worry. Then the thought crossed your mind that no, it is the day of Juma. It is a blessed day. 
maybe the speaker will say something that will inspire me. Yeah? And maybe I may learn something. So your heart trembled for a second and you made the decision to come. And that's why you are here. Right? Otherwise hundreds are there that are not here. Right? So it is the satisfaction of the soul that we are all looking for. We are all looking for something to satisfy our heart, our soul. We can get the maximum wealth that we have. After that, then what? Then what? The question keeps on going. So when the material things are coming, so today you, are, you have a job and you are doing well or you have a business or so, and your target is a million dollars. Now you have reached your million, and the, the target is now two million or 10 million, right? So, okay, now you strive towards that. Now you have got 10 million. Then you want some more, right? You got a fanciest car, right, that you want. I know nothing about cars, so whatever car is fancy there, assume you have that car. You have a nice huge house and all that. You have everything that you, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with. You have all of these things, but you still are not happy. You still want something. And what is it that you want? The material things are all at your disposal, but you're still missing something. And what you are missing and what you really want, you and I, all of us want, is the satisfaction of the heart. The soul that is wa wants that one. While my body seeks food, rest, exercise, so on and so on, my soul seeks something else. My soul seeks peace and tranquility. My soul seeks closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my soul seeks the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the tussle between uh, me and my soul. But shaitan does not want me to succeed. He does not want me to succeed. In, uh, in Surah Hijr, Surah 15, Ayat 36 to 44, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paints this picture. Qala rabbi fan فَأَنذِرْنِي إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Shaitan or Iblis said, O oh my Lord, give me then respite till the day the, de the dead are raised. You know when he refused to do the uh, sajda of Adam, Allah says, go. You are removed from here. And he says, but I have done so many thousands of years of ibadah, give me a reward. He said, okay, what is it that you want? So he asked, قَالَ فَإِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْدَرِينَ I give me, a, give me a respite till the day of uh, uh, the dead are raised. So this is the day of Qiyamah, he's asked. So Allah says, قَالَ فَإِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْدَرِينَ Respite is granted to you. إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْوَقْتِ الْمَعْلُومِ Allah says, no, not till the day of Qiyamah. Until an appointed time that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ, uh, إلى يوم الوقت المعلوم. A time which only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows where shaitan is given. Now shaitan says, قَالَ رَبِّي بِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأُزَيِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَئِينَ Oh my Lord, because you have left me to stray, I will certainly make evil attractive to them in the earth, and I will certainly cause them to go astray altogether. So he has made it very clear that he will now, because he, we are his enemy, he will make evil attractive to us, and he will cause all of us to go astray. Illa ibadika min al except those servants amongst them who are sincere and purified. Qala hada siratun ala alayya mustaqim. Allah said, this is the way of my sincere servants, is indeed a way that leads straight to me, إِنَّ عِبَادِي لَيْسَ لَكَ عَلَيْهِمْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا مَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْغَاوِينَ For over my servants, no authority shall you have except such as put themselves in the wrong and follow you. So Allah says here that when shaitan says that he will have power over us except those that follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are purified. And those that follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are purified, their path is the right path. And Allah says they will have you no, you will not have any authority over these people. So our our task, our task is to ensure that we struggle in this world so that we are on that right path. On that path the, uh, of the path, and the path that we all know is the path of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. 
this is where we really want to be. Remember, if, and with this I, I, I will complete, imagine that you were told that if you step outside this uh, uh, center, there is a, a, a sniper sitting on one of these trees and you are the target. Imagine if you are told there is a sniper sitting outside and you are the target. Now, uh, Juma is finished, Tabarruk has been given, everything is given, nobody is leaving. Normally everybody is out very quickly. No, if you believe in this one, nobody is leaving, everybody is staying put. Until Hassan Alibai says, please, I need to close. Can you start walking out, right? Now, you walk out to the door, you will look right, you will look left, you will look up, you will look down, right? You will look at your car and you will mentally calculate how many seconds it will take for you to reach your car, right? And, how many, and if, you are, if you are a mathematician, you will calculate that if, the, if I am the target, the shaitan's bullet, how many seconds it will take to hit me? Can I make it faster than that? And perhaps it was the, if it was the gold medal Olympic race, you might have won the race. You will reach there, right? You will get there. So you are aware that there is somebody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us that there is He's waiting for you. He is waiting everywhere, wherever you go. He is there to, ins to, to basically misguide you and move you away from the right path. He doesn't hold your hand and do it by the way. No. He just whispers to you and makes the evil look beautiful. And we do it. Because on the day of Qiyamah, in, another, in Surah Qiyamah, if I'm not mistaken, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paints this picture that on the day of Qiyamah, we will go to uh, him, Shaitan, you are responsible. You are responsible for where I am now suffering. And he will say, Lumu and Fusakum. Blame yourself. Don't blame me. Don't blame me. Blame yourself. I just did. I was the salesman. I was the marketing guy. I just presented to you. You decided to take that action. Right? So on this day of Juma, let us try and be Think about these things. I know these things we hear about then and after a while they become the same. But no, think about it and try and make that slight correction in our lives so that we can stay on the right path, the path of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us and keep us on that right path on this day of Jummah, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asr inna l-insana la fi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haq wa tawasaw bil sabr. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi hamdan kathira Alhamdulillah, الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفي المذنبين سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى إمام المسلمين وقائد الغر المحجلين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صلوات الله عليه وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى سيدة نساء العالمين وبضعة خاتم النبيين سيدتنا فاطمة بنت رسول الله صلوات الله عليها اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى الحسن المجتبى اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد والحسين الشهيد بكربلاء اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي عليهم الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على مولانا الصاحب الزمان اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد ما هي آثار البدع والتغيان هادم أبنية الشرك والنفاق حاصد فروع البغي والشقاق صلوات الله وسلام عليه 
وعلى باي الكرام اتصل الليالي والايام اللهم عجل فرجه وسهل مخرجه واقل ناظرنا بنظره منا اليه واجعلنا من المستشهدين بين يدي وتفضل على امرائنا المؤمنين بمزيد التوفيقات وازدياد الاقبال وعلو الدرجات اللهم افعل بنا ما انت اهله ولا تفعل بنا ما نحن اهله بجاء محمد وآله المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد The desire to love and to be loved and to be appreciated and to be remembered is very strong in human beings When you are young perhaps you do not pay attention to these matters but as you grow older you realize that most of and uh, more than half if not more of your life is gone and you are got very little time left now and you always want to be remembered in this world if you have no children you pine for children if you have if you have children you hope and pray that you have brought them up well and you hope and pray that they you will be remembered by them however besides your children and immediate family you want to be also remembered by the world at large the questions that come to mind are how will the remember the world remember me or will the world remember me what is my legacy what is it that i have left behind as we talked about earlier every human being goes through this and ibrahim alayhi salam also asked for children and his dua was granted often we argue that we are not well to do we don't have a lot of wealth that we can give away nor do we have the means nor the experience nor the knowledge uh, of how to do something positive our problem is that we tend to think that good is only done if it is big this is the problem that we have that we only think that oh i can only do good if i have a million dollars i can only do good if i am an alim i can only do good if i am a doctor a professor an engineer whatever it is that it is no we forget that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at quantity he looks at quality he looks at quality and what is our intention behind what we are doing al a'malu bin niyat all actions depend upon your intention what was your intention you know the story of ibrahim alayhi salam when he was put into the fire when he was put into the fire a lizard small little lizard took a drop of water and spit there there was no way that that little drop of water that that lizard threw on that one would basically douse that fire but the idea was that this lizard wanted to do something to save the wali of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right or the story that you may have heard before also of uh, when yusuf alayhi salam was in the marketplace when he was being auctioned to the highest bidder right he was on the he was captured and he was on the slave market and now all these big shots are now why and this old lady comes and says puts in a bid you put in a million dollar bid she comes and puts a 1 dollar bid to understand in our terminology and somebody turns and says what chance do you have he says yeah i know i don't have a chance i know but i want to be counted amongst those who bid for yusuf yeah i want to be counted amongst those so the question here is that whatever good that we can do don't think in terms of huge things think in terms of wherever you are what is it that you can do if you are walking out and you see a, p- a stone on the ground you pick it up and move it so that the next person that might pass does not trip over that that is good that allah loves because you saved the that obstacle from from a, a, a fellow human being right very important that we do that so some thoughts where we you and i can be useful and can do something good uh, that we can uh, that one is marriage reconciliation Today if you look around there used to be a time where you used to think that uh, those that get married 50% is in divorce cases right 50% outside and we used to think that that only happened outside doesn't affect us unfortunately 
we are part of that statistic also now. We are part of that statistic also. And sometimes when you get, in, you know, you get involved in uh, marriage reconciliation, you wonder, what is the problem here? You listen to both sides, you spend hours and hours and hours listening to them, and you wonder what really is the problem, right? You don't quite understand. As Malana Rizvi many times says, sometimes the primary issue is forgotten and the secondary become the primary. Why they are fighting, they don't know. One, el one elder told me a long time ago, he says one day he got a phone call from this uh, 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 wife saying that, please come, we ha I have an issue with my husband. She says, it's already 10, 11 o'clock at night. Can it wait till the morning? We can, so he said, no, come now. So he goes. So he goes there and he listens to both of them. She tells what she needs to say, he says what he needs to say, and then the man says afterwards. He says the problem really is, the crux of the problem is that she cannot stand the idea that I love her mother-in-law more than I love my mother-in-law. Did you catch that? Right? That he cannot stand, she cannot stand the idea that I love her mother-in-law more. That means my mother. Right? But he put it in such a way to say that and when she heard this for a moment she was quiet and then she started smiling. The problem was solved. The problem was solved. That was the crux of the problem. Right? So what I'm trying to say here is if you hear in your friend circle or family circle or somewhere where you can, you know, you can have some influence, go. Try and douse those unnecessary fires. Don't put more fire into it. Douse those fires. Get them together. And if you are able to do that, right, you might find. Many years ago, many years ago, I had a phone call. It was a Saturday night. No, Saturday evening. A summer Saturday evening, I remember. It was 7.30 in the evening and the phone rang. The phone rang and I picked up the phone and there was this girl on the phone and she says, uncle, do you have a few minutes? I need to uh, uh, ask you some advice. I said, sure. A few minutes, she said, right? So she talks and she talks and she talks. After one and a half hours, and she talked for, she talked most of the time, I may have interjected with one or two questions in between, but she just went on, right? And after one and a half hours, she says, Uncle, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you, that you picked up the phone. Had you not picked up the phone today, I would have broken my marriage today. What did I do? Nothing. All I did was listen. All I did was listen. Nothing I did. Yeah? Allah chose me at that moment to be of uh, one of his, shall we say, agents to listen to somebody. That's all it is. So you and I all need to look for these opportunities, right? Whereby you can infer. Sometimes just listen. Don't put your own ideas. Just listen. They will sort their own problems out, right? Very, very important. So marriage reconciliation. Talk with the youth and share your experiences. Talk with them. Listen to them. Don't present your thought process. Just listen. Just listen and you'll be surprised. If you are approachable, if you are able, if, the, if they feel that you, they can talk to you, then what will happen is they will come to you on a regular basis. And whenever they have issues, they will come and talk to you. Not because you are offering solutions, but because you are listening. Because you are listening. And when you listen, you will find that the children will solve their own problems also. Learn to be positive and not critical. No need to criticize. What good is it going to do? Right? Criticize. Let goodness flow from you. Just good. Only good coming out from your mouth and your hands. And whatever you do, only good. Goodness is infectious. Right? Goodness will spread. Right? And it will create that sense of positiveness. Put your self-interest uh, aside and go for it. Don't have your own ego. If you can be of influence, be there. If not, it's fine. Allah chooses you, gives you that opportunity, take that opportunity, try and make a difference. And I promise you that if you influence somebody and you save somebody's life, you might not know about it. But as soon as they raise their hands in dua, they will remember you. 
they will always remember you. They may tell you, they may not tell you, but they will always remember you. You know, in the create a body of elders to arbitrate in Jamaat matters and keep matters confidential, right? You don't have to be in a formal committee or something. You hear something is a problem here, you know who is the best person to be able to help, take him or her, go there, sort out the issue and move on with the next one. Invest your resources, if you have uh, uh, any that you have, into doing something for your Akhara. Remember, we have uh, to try and invest in our Akhara also. Assist in the marriage or the settling of someone who is poor or yatim. We don't know what Allah will like, right? In any khair that you do, you don't know what Allah will like and what will become the source of yours and my salvation. We don't know, right? So we have to go on the positive way that we do good, only good and only good. Goodness will give you a zest for living. You know, sometimes when you say, I've retired, I don't know what to do. My time is not going, right? Start doing good. And you will find that you will want to live. You feel like waking up in the morning and doing something. When you help others, remember there is more happiness in giving than in getting. There is more pleasure and happiness in giving than in getting. Giving does not mean money. Giving means time. Giving means lending a year. Giving means you know cleaning the uh, uh, you know the the floor and so on and so forth. Whatever it is that you can do, you have to decide. Do something. But at the bottom, if you forget everything I have said, do good, good and good. Nothing else but good. If you can't do good, then don't do anything. Don't do evil. Don't do evil. Don't find anything. Just do good, good and good. The message that I want you and I to take uh, from this uh, day of blessed day of Juma is that we are here to do good and to as much as possible for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we do that, inshallah, this will become a source of najat for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, keep us on the right path, the path of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. May he hasten the appearance of our Imam, inshallah, and may he give us that tawfiq to be of assistance to him. But we must be able to recognize him. So to recognize him and to be of assistance to him. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna Allah ya'amuru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkar wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala.